I got my hand stuck. I can't move it. I'm here for I'm here forever. We are delighted that you're here. It's been a good weekend in spite of our sickness that we've had. One little girl created a disaster. I don't know how that happened. One one bad influence on one bad apple can make all the apples bad occasionally. Right. And uh, it sure hit our family, but we really did have an excellent time Good. with everybody. And when your family gets together and you can leave happy, that's a miracle, isn't it? Amen, sir. <laughs> when I used to get with my family, we never left happy. <laughs> we asked some family members to leave. <laughs> Unfortunately, that does happen, but we are very delighted that we can come together, and that happens in churches a lot. I'm glad we've come together for the last four years, and the Lord's been good to us, and we still love each other, even though we do everything we can not to love each other. Some people get on Facebook and really make fun of you all the time, but uh, <laughs> I'm not mentioning Phyllis, I mean people's names, but... Uh, I'm now going by Father Whistnet now, so <laughs> I wonder if she's Catholic. Did you get it? Did you gather that? Yeah, I thought that she might have Hey Carl. She was a young girl in Altoona that we knew. And, I mean, I can call that before too, so and uh, but she had a sincere request about her son that's in the military and yeah. And I said it to my wife, and she said, you need to respond back to her telling you that you are praying for her son. And I tend sometimes to make light of people's requests, and that's, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You yes. should take every person's request seriously. Amen. And if they, have, uh, if they have the confidence in you to ask, then you should take it seriously. And, uh, and that's good. You are really, Terry has made comment a lot of times with our family. You know, it's, uh, you just have to give it to the Lord sometimes with your family. Amen. And I discovered I can't change my family as much as I want to. And when you try to step into their problems, you're the one who gets shot, you know. Not literally. But, uh, they're growing. We're glad of that. Well, we're glad to have uh, Bob Temple with us today. Back with us again. Flew in and surprised the kids and us. And uh, we're delighted to have him again. And of course, when he's here, he preaches. I say it's good to be preaching at 80, 80 years old, isn't it? Yeah. Sure. Oh, my goodness. Let's have prayer and then Brother Bob will come and speak to us. Heavenly Father, this morning we are delightful and grateful that you have given us a special day to give you praise. The day that you brought about creation. A special day that you brought about your death and the resurrection and the ascension. A day that you've given us that we can give you glory through our worship and our thankfulness. And so today we pray that our hearts may be open to your truth and that we'll open our minds to, to receive what the Holy Spirit has for us to receive and we'll give you praise in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Brother Bob? Well, I'm glad to be back with you again today. And... Uh, you know, one thing about coming to Rivers of Joy, I don't think I've ever had Charles ask me preach. 
He always comes along and he says, well, Bob will be speaking Sunday. He's never asked me to preach. He's always told me that I'm going to preach Sunday, and, and that's been it. I'm going to move this thing here. It's a little, little bit too long to direct. But uh, I, I, I do thank the, the Lord for the opportunity to have to preach it and teach you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I come in and wonder what in the world that I'm going to do. And uh, Charles and I was talking a little bit about it today. Uh, I think in the message today, I can, I'm going to just more or less try to give you some pointers on some of the things that I've learned in the last three years primarily since Sandra and I have been married and some of the things that we practiced and, and we found out that works and maybe they'll work for you as well as they do for us. I want to take one very familiar passage of scripture and we're going to start there today. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to read just uh, from verse 9 through verse 15. All of you are familiar with this passage of Scripture. It's one that we have used many, many times. But I'm afraid in a lot of it we have used it in the wrong way. And then we haven't made a good application of it. You know, it's one thing <coughs> to hear it taught or preached. It's another thing to practice. Now, you know, I, I remember years ago, I read a track, and I, was, I think I was in Portsmouth Baptist when I did that. I read a track entitled, Presen uh, Practicing the Presence of God. Uh, and that's what I'm afraid that much of the time that we as Christians, and I assume kind of the day that we're, we're not talking to unsaved people. We're talking to Christians. So uh, we, we need something that uh, can help you and can help me do a better job of it. We, do, we got enough failure the way it is. We don't have to add more insult to injury, you know. Uh, we have enough of it, and we need to try to help one another. Now look, if you will, at verse 9, and I'm going to begin reading there. And it says, After this manner, therefore, ye pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's bow for a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the word. Pray that you apply it to our hearts today. Help us to grow a little bit in grace and knowledge of thee. Help us to apply it to our own life. And we'll give you the praise for everything that's accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. All of us, if we think about it a minute, knows that this is not the Lord's Prayer. Amen. And I hate to shock you that because it's titled the Lord's Prayer in your Bible and everything you read is titled the Lord's Prayer. It is not the Lord's Prayer. Now, if you want to read the Lord's Prayer, go to John chapter 17. Amen. So you read John chapter 17 and you will hear uh, Christ's personal prayer to the Father. And you uh, dissect that chapter, and you read that chapter, and boy, I'll tell you what, it'll make you think a lot different about Christ and God the Father than anything else that you're going to read. I know one time that I preached a whole series of messages. Uh, matter of fact, uh, i tell you what it was, uh, we had a we had a pastor that left Victory Baptist uh, by the name of Todd Shields, and uh, they uh, had, we had to search for another pastor. And I I said to the congregation, I said, why don't you install me as interim pastor? 
That way the church is not without a pastor during this time. You know, one of the negative things you can have in a church is for the church to be advertised, well, they're without a pastor. And I instructed them that I believe that it would be a, of essence to me and for them if they were to just point me the interim pastor. Now, I did not want the church, although I'd started it. I did want to know whether they really wanted me back or not, or whether they would ever want me back. Uh, I guess I did that, and that's human. <laughs> but uh, I found out in six months of interim pastor at the church, I did not want to pastor a church again. I was past that point, and I... Feel, I felt the usefulness at my age, and I don't know what age it was then, but the usefulness at my age, it was limited as to what I could do. And we needed somebody younger than me. So I, as I was filling in that time, I spent that whole time in the 17th chapter of John. That's what I preached on. I think if I remember right, I preached on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. We covered the whole 17th chapter of John. And that's what we uh, estimate on. But, you know, you go read it, you go study it, and you'll see that there's a lot that the Lord says here. But in this passage of Scripture here, you say, well, that's not the Lord's Prayer. Well, what is it? It is... His example for the disciples to pray. That's right, amen. It's the disciples' disciples' pattern of prayer. Now, if you go on up to a few verses, and I, I'm not going to go up there and read it, but if you start at about 5, uh, chapter 5, he gives some things not to do in the prayer, in your prayer. You don't stand on the street corner and pray as everybody can see you. Because that's your reward. Now you just take that one statement and it'll show you that there is a reward for somebody praying audibly before somebody else. Matter of fact, there is a prayer that will satisfy yourself that will not satisfy God. Now, some of you looking at me with a sheep with a new gate. 